Hello, Year 10. We're back with another video looking at equations with fractions. Okay, now these often get people uh, tripped up, stumbled up, so we've got to be careful in the way that we think about these. Uh, however, if we understand what we're doing, if we have a checklist in our mind that we go through, then we're going to be able to solve these relatively consistently. So uh, there are lots of different kinds of equations with fractions and the way we go about them is different so we first need to recognize the features of that equation uh, before we proceed so let's look at this first one here we've got a fraction that's five uh four x on plus three divided all divided by five equals minus two so what do we see here well we've got one side of the equation that's all one big fraction and then the other side that's just a number Okay, so that's the first thing we recognize. Now we talked about the last couple of lessons about doing things in reverse bid mass order. Okay, so instead of brackets, indices, and then division, multiplication, addition, subtraction, we do it in the reverse order. So we get rid of addition, subtraction first, we get rid of um, multiplication, division next, and then indices and then brackets. Now, however, we need to be careful because when we look at this question, We've got uh, division, we've got addition. However, there's a hidden pair of brackets here. Whenever you have a fraction written as such, uh, and you've got two terms on the top, there's actually a hidden pair of brackets saying that we're dividing all of that at the top, which means we're going to move the brackets across or deal with the brackets last because reverse bid mass order, you deal with brackets last. So first thing we're going to do is get rid of that divided by five, move it across to the other side by making it a times. So we're gonna leave the four X plus three as it is. We don't need to write the brackets in, they're hidden brackets in that example. And it becomes minus two times five. We've left the four X plus three, we've moved the five across first. Remember the reason why we did that is we're doing reverse bid mass order and there's a hidden pair of brackets on the top part. Okay, so let's simplify that. 4x plus 3 stays the same, and then it becomes minus 10. Now, we continue with reverse bid mass order. Do we move the times 4 first, or do we move the plus 3? In equations, we move the plus 3 first. Reverse bid mass order. So it becomes 4x equals minus 10 minus 3. 4x is minus 13. And the last thing we do is get rid of this times by four by dividing by four on the other side. Okay, so we've got to our answer. X is on its own. We did reverse bid mass order to get there. Okay, let's look at example B here. We have a one third out the front of a pair of, of, a pair of brackets with a two X minus one in the middle. And the other side just has the number minus four. So, the number at the front of a bracket is just the same as uh, if it's a fraction, as if it is a whole number. Um, it's just that we're timesing by a third, which is actually the same as dividing by three. So we can see this example is actually very similar to our first example, except instead of writing it all as a fraction, we've actually shown the brackets there and we're saying we're timesing by one third as opposed to dividing all of it by three. So we could have written it as just x, 2x minus 1 all over 3. That would have been the same thing. So the opposite operation, the first thing we're going to do, we leave the brackets and what's in the brackets, and we're going to get rid of that one third. Okay, the opposite of timesing by a third is actually the same as timesing by 3. Okay, timesing by, the, by a third is the same as dividing by 3. So what we're going to do, so we're going to leave the 2x minus 1 there and we're going to times the other side by 3 so it becomes minus 4x times 3. So the reason why we times by 3 because the opposite of timesing by a third is timesing by 3 because timesing by a third is the same as dividing by 3. I hope that makes sense. So it's essentially reversing the divide by 3 to become times by 3 on the other side. Let's simplify the right side, leave the left side as it is, becomes minus 12. Okay, reverse bid mass order, get rid of the minus one, becomes minus 12 plus one, two X becomes minus 11. 
and then we divide by 2 when we get minus 11 on 2. Okay, so we've got to the end there. All right, let's look at a few more examples. So here we have two sets of fractions. So remember, we need to recognize the features first. We have two sets of fractions. 2x minus 1 divided by 3 equals 5 on 2. We don't have any other things outside of those fractions. Um, so we can actually do an interesting technique here where we do multiple steps at once uh, to make it a bit easier. So the opposite of dividing by 3 is timesing the other side by 3. The opposite of dividing by 2 is timesing the other side by 2. So what we can do is what's called cross multiplying, where we can move this 2 to the other side and the 3 to the other side. So I kind of scribbled over the question here. Uh, to uh, times the other side uh, by the number that's on the bottom of the other side. Um, however, we need to be careful. If we're timesing the left side by 2, we need to make sure we include both the 2x and the minus 1. If we're multiplying multiple things, we need to include brackets. So it's going to become 2 times 2x minus 1, close brackets. Because we've got to multiply both of those terms, we make brackets there. And then on the other side, we're going to times the 5 by 3. So what we've done is we've moved the 2 across and times, we've moved the 3 across and times, okay? That way we've got rid of our fractions and we just need to simplify here. First, expand the brackets becomes 4x minus 2, 5 times 3 becomes 15, and then reverse bid mass, 4x equals 15 plus 2, okay, x equals 17, and then divide... Oops, 4x equals 17, and then divide by 4 becomes 17 over 4, and that's our final answer. So we cross multiplied, simplified, got rid of our brackets, and then rearranged to get our answer. Okay, for B, that was A, uh, we have another pair of brackets. So let's do those same steps. We're going to cross multiply. The 7 moves across to the top, the 5 moves across to the top of the other side. So it becomes 7 times 3x minus 1 equals, and then the 5 goes across to become 2x times 5. Let's simplify. Expand it out, becomes 21x minus 7 equals 2x times 5 is 10x. Okay, now because we have an x on this side here, we need to move it across to the other side. Remember, get the, uh, the pronumerals on the same side first, and then move everything else over to the other side. So it's going to become 21x stays there, move the 10x over, minus 10x, and then move the minus 7 over to become just positive 7. We can then simplify to get 11x equals 7, and then finally divide by 11, and we get 7 on 11 as such. So that instance was similar to the first example here, uh, but we had to move the x across as well. All right, last couple of examples here. Whew. So in this feature, we have a fraction, but the other side does not have a fraction. So we can't cross multiply. We can only move one of those numbers across. There's no other number to move across. Uh, so let's do this question first. I'm going to get rid of that too. Remember, um, I don't like fractions. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the fraction because then I'll have a question without fractions that I can solve easier. So move the 2 across. It's going to become 3x minus 1 equals 2. And remember, we're multiplying both the 4x and the minus 1, so we need to show brackets. When you're multiplying multiple things, include brackets. Okay, now we can expand those brackets. 3x minus 1 equals 8x minus 2. Move the x's to the same side and everything else to the other side. So it becomes 3x minus 8x. Okay, and then the plus, uh, the minus 1 becomes a plus 1. And then we can simplify, it becomes minus 5x equals minus 1, which will become just 1 on 5. We can get rid of those minuses there because we're dividing a minus by a minus. Okay, last example here. Now we have two fractions, 
Uh, we can cross multiply, but we need to include those brackets because we're going to multiply multiple things. So it's going to become 5 times 2x plus 5. And make sure you include those brackets because you will multiply both of those things. Equals 4, 3x minus 1. Okay, expand it out and then we'll rearrange and we'll finish. So it equals 10x plus 25 equals 12x minus 4. Get the x's on the same side, everything else to the other side. 10x minus 12x equals minus 4 minus 25. And then that becomes minus 2x equals minus 29 x equals 29 on 2. And that's our final answer. We get rid of those negatives because we're dividing a, a negative by a negative. And we've got there. Okay, good luck with these ones. If you can do these equations, then you're smashing it. Uh, if you have any issues, do contact me and I'll see you later.